At the moment, Barcelona are 8th in the table, Real Madrid are 4th, and Atletico Madrid is in 3rd, while Barcelona and Atletico Madrid have two games in hand. The Giants may continue to rise up the table, but as things stand, Real Sociedad leads La Liga with 20 points, 6 wins, 2 draws, and just 1 loss. But how did the Basque side climb up this too early to make a big deal out of Mountain? Let's take this one step more. Can a certain Catalan club in crisis learn something from the league leaders? And yes, I'm talking Barcelona, but this could also apply to second division side Espanyol as well. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton. This is a Barcelona podcast YouTube exclusive. Before we get to the things that Barcelona can learn, I think we should briefly talk about the Valley before Real Sociedad's current recent hill. This is a team with a ton of history, having been a part of the very first season of La Liga back in 1929. Since then, they've played 72 seasons in La Liga and 16 in the second division. The glory years came in the 1980s when the team won back-to-back La Liga titles, their only league championships to date in 1980-81 and 81-82, and runners-up in 1979-80. It was a squad built on the back of Basque football, practicing the unwritten Basque rules of only using Basque players. While rival athletic club still practices this today, Real Sociedad stopped this policy in 1989 when they signed John Aldridge from Liverpool. The club earned Champions League football for the 2003-04 season and advanced to the round of 16. However, as is too many times the case, the added stress of Europe decimated domestic form, with the club finishing 15th of 20th that year. That downward slide continued and the club was relegated in 2007. In 2010, the club won back their spot in the Liga, finishing first in the second division. And by the 2012-13 season, they were back to coming in fourth and making the Champions League. Since then, the club has managed finishes of 7th, 12th, 9th, 6th, 12th, 9th, and 6th, making it to the Copa del Rey final last season against their Bilbao neighbors, a match that is still to be played due to the current lack of fans. Now you might be wondering, but Dan, recent results indicate that they haven't really been building in a linear way. But if you look a little closer, you'll see that the current league leaders put their current plan in motion prior to 2018, when they began to roll it out to the rest of Spain. And that was even as Xabi Prieto, a club legend and a one-club man, was retiring and heading off into the sunset. Last decade, the club employed quite a few managers with plenty of turnover, including David Moyes, Eusebio, and Garitano. The current boss, Emmanuel Aguasil, is a name that is not at all known outside of Spain, but he represents something different. In 2011, he returned to the club where he got his professional start, playing 113 times for the first team, and he was appointed as a manager in the Cantera. In 2013, he moved on to an assistant role with the B team and moved up to Moyes' staff in 2014, before quickly heading back down to the B team as manager. In 2018, following Eusebio's sacking, he served as first team manager from March until Garitano was hired at the end of the season. Garitano didn't last long though, getting the boot in March and once again, the club man got promoted. He actually has a better win percentage with the first team than he ever did with the reserves, but part of that is because he uses what he learned in the reserves. It's quite a romantic idea that the prodigal son returns. Gee, I can't think of anyone that applies to a Barca, but the shine of the company man hasn't worn off just yet. And the main reason for that is the first thing that Barca can learn from the league leaders. Institutional trust. It should come as no surprise that continuity can breed success, at least until things get stale. And at the moment, Imino is pressing all the right buttons. But that's because there seems to be an understanding and synergy from the tippity top to the manager. Sporting director Roberto Alave is the architect of the current squad, and he has given plenty of room to operate under long-serving club president Joaquin Eberibe. The stadium was recently renovated, and Alave has been allowed to be aggressive with the players he wants, because he hasn't gotten too much wrong. Goals cost the most, so it's no surprise that the attack is made up of imports over the last few seasons. William Jose, Alexander Isak, Adnan Zanajai, and Porto were all found at the right time at the right price, most recently Porto, who was bought as Girona were relegated. But the leading goal scorer is still an academy product, Mikel Oyafabo. Oyafabo is a lifer at Real Sociedad, making his debut at 18 and growing into one of the best players in Spain. The secret sauce is that Imanol's system and Alave's sporting project work in tandem, and at the moment at least, those ideas are facilitated down the ladder into the Cantera, where Imanol draws his inspiration. There is also buy-in from youth coaches, most notably Xabi Alonso, who manages Real Sociedad Bay, inevitably on his way to a higher profile job. Because even if it seems like Imanol is just keeping the seat warm for Xabi Alonso, the idea would be that the World Cup winning midfielder wouldn't change much. Whether you call it a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-3-3, the idea is the same. 
Last season, the midfield three consisted of two hard workers and Martin Odegaard, pulling the strings. Since Odegaard has gone back to Madrid, 34-year-old David Silva was brought in from Man City and back to the league after 10 years to play in that position. Is it worrisome to have your entire setup run through a legendary playmaker in his 30s? Alright, so the sarcasm was a bit much there, but you get the idea. One of the other two midfield spots was upgraded this offseason by signing Mikel Moreno, the former Osasuna midfielder who never really settled at Borussia Dortmund or Newcastle, but he is still 24 and now arguably enjoying the best form of his career. The other midfielder in that trio is the second thing that Barca can take from the San Sebastian based club. Because that position has a specific job, there hasn't necessarily been just one name. It's supposed to be Area Mendy or 23 year old Igor Zabeldia, but they have both been dealing with injuries this season. That's meant that 21 year old Martin Zubamendi, 25 year old John Garidi, and 23 year old Ander Guevara have had considerable responsibility this season. 20 year old Roberto Lopez is the backup in the more attacking midfield spot, and this is not counting attacking midfielder Luca Zangali, a 25 year old youth product that was promoted two seasons ago who is currently injured. Of that group, Zubimendi and Lopez got promoted this season, and Garidi returned from loan at second division side Mirandas. Guevara got promoted the year before at the age of 21, alongside 22-year-old and now top-choice center back Robin Leinoman, backup left-back Munoz, and 17-year-old winger Ander Berentechea. So why do I keep reading all those ages? It's to say that patience was a factor, and that patience was rewarded. If Ricky Puj was on this list of midfielders, so excluding the last three names I mentioned, he'd be the second youngest. Unlike Barca, who dissolved the C team in 2007 after the B team dropped to the fourth level, Real Sociedad actually started their C team in 2016. Now Youth Academy products go through the C team, which currently plays in the 4th division, and the B team, which plays in the 3rd division, before reaching the 1st team. Unless, of course, you are a prodigy like Baron Teixeira. Now, I'm not calling for the C team to return to Barca. I actually think the level of the Juvenil A is fair, and any players good enough to play for Barca B will get the call-up. But what Barca should try to relearn is how to create a plan that allows a player like Manchu or Alex Callado to not be done at the club by the age of 21, but instead beginning their integration into the first team as squad players. Not every player can be a superstar, and if the club had any continuity between the board and the first team manager down through the academy, players could show their stuff for a first team manager for multiple years and be able to deliver what he wants by the time they get the chance with the first team. Contrast this to Puj, who has seen four different first team managers since he was 18, and only Setien gave him a chance out of necessity. The manager who got the best out of him in that time? Pimienta. Yes, I know that the level of Barca is supposed to be higher than Real Sociedad, and the players should all be individually better, but Barca's lack of continuity is what helped put the club into this mess with transfers that were not brought in with any idea in mind. Quite simply, it's okay to go out and get a great player, but Real Sociedad are doing that because they've trusted that continuity and brought in the players they needed. Barca had done the opposite. No continuity and just buying players. Well, you know the story by now. The final thing Barca can learn from Real Sociedad is kind of a stretch, but it's how to use Antoine Griezmann. This isn't cut and dry though. Yes, he did play on the wing at Real Sociedad for years, and now he looks like he's never played there before, because it is true that he's evolved as a player and functions much better as a secondary striker. I don't have the answer to this one, but Barca should try to learn whatever it was that made Griezmann so successful out wide during his La Real days. I'm not saying play him on the wing. I'm saying find a way to get through to him again. The last one about Griezmann is a bit of a stretch, I know. And this whole video can turn to nonsense if we also see a dad like Cinderella at the ball wind up turning into a pumpkin after the international break and go tumbling down the table. But I don't know how likely that is because of all the reasons why they have been such a good side this season. They could fall down the table a few spots, but I do think this team is for real. No pun intended. And I know this was content that you're not really used to, but it is the international break. So if you like content like this and want more of it, give us a like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca!